Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 34 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to be focusing on the topic of Venn diagrams. So we're going to be dealing with questions that involve Venn diagrams. So I'm going to show you in this video some wordy questions, so some questions that involve a situation where you've got to create a Venn diagram to find out some information. But also I'm going to be looking at some of the notation that you might encounter whenever you're looking at Venn diagram questions. If you get the Code Maths Revision Cards, there's a revision card on Venn diagrams as well, so that'll be really useful for you. So have a look at your revision cards and find that revision card and look at the notation there and maybe stick it up on the wall or quiz yourself on it. It'll be a really useful revision card for you. But in today's video, we're going to look at Venn diagrams. I'm going to go through some questions and there'll be some for you to try as well. So remember to press pause if you try those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at Venn diagrams. So in this video, we're going to look at some wordy questions involving Venn diagrams. And then we're going to focus on some of the notation that you may encounter whenever you're dealing with Venn diagram questions. So let's start off by looking at some wordy questions. So here's our first question. It says 160 people were asked if they liked three songs. Their song A, song B and song C. 23 people liked all three songs. So in terms of liking all three songs, they're going to be in the middle here. So 23 people liked all three songs. So they're going to go there. So we've done that one. 18 people like song A and song B, so they're going to be in the circles for song A and B, but not C. And it's because of song A and song B, that's going to be where they overlap. So A and B overlap here, but not C. So that means that 18 people are going to go there. They like song A and they like song B, but not song C. So they're going to go there. So we've done that one. Two people like song A and song C, but not B. So like in song A and B will be here, but not B will be this region here. So two people will go there. Next, 49 people like song B and song C, but not A. So 49 people like song B and C, but not A, so they're gonna go there. 49 people liked B and C, they're in the circle for B and the circle for C, but not in the circle for A. So 49 people like song B and C, but not A, so they're gonna go there. Next, 59 people only like song B. So only like and song B would be here, and 59 people go there, so we've done that one. We're then told that 45 people like song A. Now let's have a look at song A. That's that whole circle, song A. So it doesn't say only like song A, it said they like song A. So 45 people are going to go in this region here for song A. So that means all of the numbers, this number, this number, this number, and this number, have to add together to be 45. So let's add together the numbers we know so far. So we've got 18, 23, and 2. Let's add those up and see what we get. 8 plus 3 is 11, plus 2 is equal to 13, so put our 3 down, carry our 1. And 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4, so that's 43. So there's 43 people so far that like song A, and we're told that 45 people like song A, so it means there has to be another 2 there, so there's now 45 in that region. So we've done that one. And then finally we've got 4 people did not like any song. So if they didn't like any song, they're going to be outside of these circles, so they're going to be there. So 4 people did not like any song. And we've got one more section to fill out, and that's the people that only like song C. Now, altogether, there are 160 people. So if we add these numbers together and take them away from 160, then we'll know how many people only like song C. So let's do that. So when we add up all these numbers, whenever we do 2 plus 2 plus 18 plus 23 plus 49 plus 59 plus 4, whenever we add up all those numbers, we get that's equal to 157. So there's 157 people so far. There's 160 altogether. So if we do 160, take away the 157, that's equal to 3. So that means there's three people that only like song C. So there's three people there. And that's it. We've completed the Venn diagram. So we've answered that wordy question on Venn diagrams. So that's something that you may encounter. You may be given a wordy situation where you've got to complete a Venn diagram. Um, so it's just being prepared for those. And I highly recommend the practice questions today because there's some practice questions on questions like this. Okay, let's have a look at one for you to try now yourself. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, in a class of 30 students, so there's a class of 30 students, 20 play the piano, 12 played the guitar. Now, actually, because they had together to be 32, some of these students must play both the piano and the guitar. And one student plays an either instrument. And the question says, how many students only play the guitar? And how many students play both the piano and the guitar? So feel free to press pause now to try this question yourself. Okay, so we're told in a class of 30 students, so we've got a Venn diagram, and we know all together in our Venn diagram there's going to be 30 students. 20 play the piano, so let's label our region as piano and our other region as guitar. And where they overlap will be both the piano and the guitar, and outside will be the students who don't play either of those instruments. So we're then told that 20 students play the piano, so all together in this region there's going to be 20 students. There's going to be 20 students that play the piano. Now we don't know the split, we don't know how many play only the piano and how many play the piano and guitar, so we're going to have to figure that out how many are going to go in here and how many are going to, going to go in there. But altogether, there's 20 students to play the piano. 
We're told that 12 students play the guitar. So again, 12 students are going to be in the guitar region. Again, we don't know the split. It could be 12 play both and 0 play only the guitar. It could be 6 and 6 and so on. And we're told that one person plays neither instrument. So we're going to put the one outside because they play neither instrument. So that one person goes outside of the piano and guitar region. So they're going to go there. And the first question says, how many students only play the guitar? So we want to figure out how many people go in there to begin with. How many people only play the guitar? Now to do that, first of all, we're told that 20 students play the piano. So if we consider this region for the piano, this region here, altogether there's going to be 20 people in there. Now we don't know the split yet, but we know there's going to be 20 people in there. And we know that one person plays neither. So altogether, this 1 plus 20 plus this missing number must add together to be 30. So let's do 20 plus 1, that's equal to 21. And then if we do 30, the number of students take away 21, that's equal to 9. So that means that there must be 9 students that only play the guitar, because we know that 20 play the piano in total. We know one person plays neither. Altogether, that's 21. So there must be 9 in there. So we now know how many only play the guitar, and we know that one person plays neither. Let's actually find out how many people play both and how many play only the piano. So let's find out how this 20 is split into these two regions. So let's figure out how many go here and how many go here. And we know they must add together to be 20. Now we were told that 12 students play the guitar. Now if we look at this, we've got 9 here. We know there has to be 12 altogether. So 12 take away 9 is equal to 3. So there has to be 3 in the middle here, so because that then would give us the 12 in this region here for guitar. Now in terms of the piano, we were told that there's 20 people that played the piano all together. So three people play both, so there must be 17 there. And let's just check that. 1 plus 17 is 18, plus 3 is 21, plus 9 is 30. We've got 20 playing the piano, we've got 12 playing the guitar, and we've got more one person playing neither. Fantastic. So how many people only play the guitar? That's going to be 9. And how many people play both the guitar and the piano? That's going to be 3. And that's it. So we've had a look at a couple of wordy questions, and I highly recommend the practice questions today because in the practice questions, there's more of these for you to practice. Now let's have a look at some of the notation that you may encounter whenever you deal with Venn diagrams. Now before we carry on, actually, there's a symbol here. This is the symbol Xi, and Xi stands for the universal set. So it stands for all the information that you're looking at in a particular question. So if you see that symbol, it just means the information you're looking at in the question it means all of the information. That means the universal set. Okay, now let's have a look at the Corp Maps Revision card. So this is the Corp Maps Revision card, and we've got A. So if we've got a Venn diagram where we've got A, a and B. A would obviously be in yellow here, so that's A. B would be in yellow there, that's the region B. Okay, so next we're going to look at this A with the little dash above it. That means the complement of A. So on our Venn diagram, it means everything that's not A. So if we've got A, A dash means the complement of A. It means everything else apart from A, right? So not A. So A with a little dash is the complement of A. It's everything that's not A. In terms of B dash, that's the complement of B, which means it's everything that's not B. So it's everything outside of B in yellow there. Okay, so we've looked at A, we've looked at B, we've looked at A dash, which is the complement of A, or not A. We've looked at B dash, which is the complement of B, or not B. Okay, next we've got this symbol, which is the union symbol, so this is A union B. I read it as A or B, so it's anything that's in A or B, so it's A or B, or both. So it's anything that's in A or B, so anything that's in A or anything that's in B, and as you can see, it's that region there in yellow. And finally, we've got this symbol, this is the intersect symbol, so it's A intersect B, and it's where they intersect or where they overlap. So it's A and B. It's the region that's in N, A and B. And that's it. So this is some of the notation that you may encounter whenever you're looking at Venn diagrams. You might have A dash, which is the complement of A, which means not A. You've got B dash, which is the complement of B or not B. You've got A union B. I like to think of it as A or B, and it's anything that's in A or B. And then you've got A intersect B, and I like to read that as A and B. It's the region that's A and B. And that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at some questions where we're dealing with this notation. Okay, so let's have a look at a question now where we're going to be dealing with this notation. So we've been given a Venn diagram that shows information about the languages studied by 200 students in year 11. So we've got some students that study French, some that study German, and we've got some that study both, and we've got some that study neither of those languages. And then we're told a student is picked at random, find the probability of the following. And we're told that F is the student that studies French and G is the student that studies German. So we want to find the probability that a student is uh, selected at random from all of the 200 students. And we want to find the probability that they study French. So we want to find out how many students study French and we want to find that probability. So let's have a look at our Venn diagram. So in terms of the Venn diagram, all together in terms of studying French, there's 57 that study only French and there's 19 that study French and German. So if we add those two together, 57 plus 19, that's equal to 76. 
So we now know there's 76 students that study French in this region. And altogether there's 200 students. So if we were to pick one of those at random, the probability of choosing the one that studies French would be 76 out of 200. So the probability of one of them studying French would be 76 out of 200. And that cancels down to 19 fiftieths. And that's it. So if a student's picked at random from the 200 students, the probability that they study French would be 19 fiftieths or 76 two hundredths. Okay, next we're asked what's the probability that the student picked at random studies German. So altogether, let's figure out how many students study German. So there's 19 study both French and German, and there's 41 that study only German. If we add those together, we get 60. There's 200 students altogether. We're picking one at random, so it's going to be 60 out of 200. And that cancels down to 3 tenths. So the probability that a student picked at random will study German will be 3 tenths, or 60 two hundredths. Okay, next. So this time we've got the F with a little dash. So remember that means the complement of F. It means not F. So in other words, we've been asked, we'll find the probability that the student does not study French. So we want to figure out how many students do not study French. So these students don't study French, and these students do not study French. So altogether, there'd be 83 plus 41. That's equal to 124. That means 124 students do not study French. And then if we were to pick one of the 200 at random, the probability that they don't study French would be 124 out of 200. And that cancels down. If you cancel that down, that's equal to 31. 50ths. Now there was a bit of a shortcut there. If we know the probability that they study French was 19 50ths, we could have taken that away from 1 to get 31 50ths to find the probability that they don't study French, because obviously the probability that they study French and don't study French have to add together to be 1. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at some more parts. Okay, this time we've been asked to find the probability that they don't study German. So we're trying to find the probability that they don't study German. Remember, G dash means not G. So not studying German, well, that's going to be those students and those students. They don't study German. So we're going to do 57. They don't study German, plus another 83. They don't study any language. And if we add those two together, we get 140. And then that means the probability that it shouldn't pick a random. If there's 200, it's going to be 140 out of 200. And that cancels down to 7 tenths. So the probability that they don't study German would be 7 tenths. And remember that we had the probability that they study German was 3 tenths. So if we took that away from 1, the probability that they don't study German would be 7 tenths. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've been asked to find the probability of F union G. So remember F union G, well, A union B is A or B. So it's either A or B or both. So it's anything in any of those regions. So in this question, we've been asked to find the probability of F union G. That means the probability of French or German. So it means either French or German or both. So we're trying to find anything that's in the French and German regions. So it's going to be this, it's going to be this, and it's going to be this. It's going to be all of the students who study French or German. So if we add those up, we'll find how many students study French or German. So 57 plus 19 plus 41, and that's equal to 117. So there's 117 students that study French or German, or both. And altogether, there's 200 students. So if we were to pick one at random, the probability of that student studying French or German will be 117 out of 200. And that's it. So the probability of F union G would be equal to 117 out of 200. And that's it. Okay, next, let's have a look at the probability of F intersect G. So if we go back to our Venn diagram, A intersect B means A and B. It's the overlap between them. So if we look here, the probability of F intersect G will mean the probability that they study French and German. So there's 19 students who study French and German. So the probability of picking one of those at random out of the 200 would be 19 two hundredths. And that's it. Okay, so here's a question now for you to try yourself. So we've got a Venn diagram, and we're told the Venn diagram shows information about the drink enjoyed by 70 people. So 70 people were doing a taste test. They were given drink A and drink B, and they were asked if they liked them. Some people didn't like either of them. Some people liked both of them. Some people only liked drink A, and some people only liked drink B. And we're told that one of the 70 people is chosen at random, and I would like you to find the probability of someone liking drink A, the probability of someone liking drink B, and the probability of the complement of A. So think of what that that means. So press pause and try this now. Okay, so to start off with, the probability that they like drink A. So if we have a look at drink A, altogether 29 people like drink A. 11 plus 18 is 29. So there's 29 people that like drink A. And we want to find the probability that one of the 70 people chosen at random like drink A. That's going to be 29 out of 70. So the probability that they like drink A would be 29 70ths.
Okay, next, they're probably that they like drink B. So let's have a look at drink B. So these people like drink B. These people like both drink A and drink B. And these ones just like drink B. So all together, in terms of like and drink B, we're going to do 18 plus 37. And 18 plus 37 is 55. So all together, there's 55 people that like drink B. So the probability of someone choosing a random like and drink B will be 55 out of 70. 55 70 ifs, and that's it. So the probability of someone like and drink B would be 55 70 ifs. Now, just out of interest, if you cancel it down, you would have got 11 14 and if you did cancel it down, you would have got 11 14s. Okay, next. Okay, this time we've been asked to find the probability of the complement of A. So remember, the complement of A means not A. So we're looking for the probability of it not being A. So let's find the people that are not A. Well, these people are not A. They don't like A. And these people don't like A. So the probability of someone not like an A, well, we'd add these together. 4 plus 37 is equal to 41. So there's 41 people that don't like A altogether, because remember there's 29 that did, so 41 don't. So the probably if someone chosen at random does not like A would be 41 70 ths and that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, next. Okay, we've got the same Venn diagram, but this time I'd like you to find the probability of the complement of B, the probability of A union B, and the probability of A intersect B. So pause the video and find these probabilities now. Okay, the probability of not B. So not B, well, they don't like B, and they don't like B. So there's 15 people that don't like B. So the probability of someone that doesn't like B, that's going to be 15 70 ths. So that's the probability of someone not liking B. And if you cancelled that down, you would get that's equal to 3 14 ths. So the probability of not B or the complement of B would be 15 70 ths or 3 14 ths. Okay, next we've been asked to find the probability of A union B. Remember union means or, so the probability of A or B. So that's either A or B. So let's go back to our Venn diagram. So that's the probability that someone likes A or B, or both. So that means that A or B would be that region, that region, or that region. So it's anyone in A or B. So the probability of A or B, well, let's add them together. That's going to be 11 plus 18 plus 37 will be equal to 66. So it's going to be 66 70. So that's the probability of choosing someone at random that likes A or B, A union B. And we could cancel that down. If we cancel that down, we get that's equal to 33 30 fifths. And that's it. Our next one is to find the probability of A intersect B. So A intersect B, that means A and B. If we have a look at our Venn diagram, A intersect B would be A and B. So the region that's both of them. So A and B would be that region. So there's 18 people that like drink A and drink B. So there's 18 out of 70 would be the probability, 18 70ths. And that cancels down, and that cancels down to 9 35ths. And that's it. So the probability of someone like an A intersect B, A and B, would be those people there. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at Venn diagrams. We've looked at some wordy questions, so some questions that involve a situation or a context. And we've also looked at some of the notation that you may encounter whenever you're dealing with Venn diagrams. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, could you, if you know any friends or family that are doing the GCC maths exams and they might find these videos useful, could you please share them with them as well so that they might benefit from the videos as well? Well, thanks very much. I'll see you tomorrow for 33 days going to GCC Maths again. Cheers. Bye.